Monster Hunter is a series that evolves with every installment, each new release bringing with it a slew of new and improved features. These include new ways to play, altered game mechanics, a bunch of new weapons and armor, and of course, bigger and better monsters. I believe that Capcom is at their best when it comes to these creatures. I have yet to be disappointed by one of the new monsters that they have made. And that is probably because they learned from their mistakes with the old monsters. Hey! What's the big idea? Well... Okay, okay. That's fair. I am not saying the old Monster Hunter monsters are bad. I mean, come on, a second generation monster is my favorite in the series. <laughs> Was my favorite, but that's besides the point. There are a lot of cool monsters in the early generations. But there are also several bad ones. Monsters that I really hate fighting that keep coming back in later installments. Before I completely lose myself in Monster Hunter Generations, I want to take some time to highlight some of these creatures. It might sound odd to celebrate a game release with a negative countdown, but I think it's important to look back at the bad stuff. It helps us appreciate just how much better things have gotten. To start this list of monsters, let's talk about the ones that started the earlier games. Gaia Drome. Gendrome. Iodrome. Velocidrome. Long ago, these four raptors and I lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when they drove me absolutely insane. These little buggers are small, fast, and they hunt in packs. Being some of the first boss monsters, they are hilariously easy to kill, which honestly makes them worse. Like a fly buzzing around the room. It can't kill me, it'll die if I can just hit it, but it never stops moving and it will never shut up. To add insult to injury, these raptors will pop up in other boss fights. This is where they become dangerous, as it is very hard to keep track of two bosses at once, giving an Iodrome the perfect opportunity to knock me into a Teostra explosion. You just lost me 6,000 zenny, you stupid raptor! Once upon a time, I wanted to make Rathalos armor. Look at this armor. It is so cool that it's a costume in Smash Brothers. But before I could complete my set, I needed one Rathalos plate. Which is fine. It's a rare drop. They're awesome monsters. I can hunt a few more. Around my 15th Rathalos, I began to question if this was really worth it. But surely, the next one will drop it. The next hunt will be the one. 20... 25, 30. It wasn't until my 36th Rathalos that I finally got a Rathalos plate. I hate to say it, but I have gotten sick of the Rathalos and the Rathian. And it's not just because of that experience. In every game in this series, on every rank of difficulty. There will be a quest to hunt a Rathian, and a Rathalos, then a pink Rathian, and an Azure Rathalos, the Rathian and Rathalos together, the pink and Azure together, the gold and silver ones, multiples of the same type, accompanied by other monsters, and so many of them are required. Ugh. I need a break. I've been knocked down, poisoned, burned, killed, and I've found maybe 10 plates total. I'm sorry, but I'm done. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate was a great opportunity for me. 
Not only was I getting to fight a bunch of cool new monsters, I was finally hunting some old ones I had never seen before. The Ukonlos, Tiastra, Fatalis, and several others. And best of all, a monster that I had anticipated for years, the Kirin, whose fight is not very good. The Kirin is classified as an Elder Dragon, which is the Hunting Guild's way of saying, we don't know what this is, but it's gonna kill you. Here's some potions, a map, and a useless torch. Have fun dying. The Kirin could power a small city with the lightning it creates. Most of its attacks involve giant, painful lightning bolts striking the ground around it. Which, in of itself, would be awesome. Several monsters do something similar. But other monsters aren't so... small. Take everything annoying about the drones and multiply it by six. And you'd have something close to the Kirin fight. That fly analogy that I used before? It is now a yellow jacket. This kind of yellow jacket. But at least the weapons are cool, right? All spiky and electric. Yeah, yeah! These will make it all worth it. And I am sure the armor looks just as... WHAT?! Everybody has that one kind of humor that they absolutely despise. For some people, it's sarcasm. Even though sarcasm is clearly the best kind of humor ever. And all of you should use it all the time. Especially on the internet. For others, they just really cannot stand silly voices. Because apparently silly voices are for children. And above that stuff. But for me, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry. But for me, I cannot stand, for lack of a better phrasing, bathroom jokes. Which is what the conga lala is in a nutshell. I knew something was wrong when I was given deodorant for this quest. Even then, I was flabbergasted when this pink-furred, red-butted baboon nearly killed my hunter with a fart. A fart that was so disgusting that it prevented me from eating items, which kept me from healing just long enough for it to kill me with the poop it pulled from its blushing behind. Someone explain this to me, please, because I don't get it. How do people find this so entertaining? What is so funny about this? Oh, look at me. <laughs> Fart noises are funny and clever. Okay, so it's a little funny. But still, the Kongalala is a stupid, fat, ugly, lazy, clumsy, and stinky primate that I never want to fight again. There is something oddly charming about innocent stupidity. About making silly mistakes because something does not know better. Like a curious toddler, getting excited or upset over meaningless things, always bursting with energy, and constantly falling on its face. Capcom took these adorable characteristics and gave them to a... overgrown, fire-breathing, featherless chicken. I don't want to kill Yengudakus. They're not causing any trouble. They're too clumsy, ugly, and stupid to do that. All they want to do is eat conchus. And I hate conchus. If we could tame monsters in these games, I would keep a Yengudaku solely to eat those stupid conchus. But I can't do that. I have to put down this bumbling bird. So I'll spend the next 10 minutes whacking a monster that can't even run in a straight line. Once it finally hits the ground, I feel nothing but shame. I just murdered an innocent bird to butcher for money and parts I'm never even going to use. <sighs> Capcom, why did you make a monster like this? 
Why couldn't you make it ugly and scary and- Oh no! That's right, we are going out of order. The Yin Kudaku has grown into its angsty teenage years as a Yin Garuga. It's just as clumsy, even uglier than before, but now, it's a bully. A ridiculously fast, strong, angry, poisonous bully that actively avoids traps. And it's not just mean to hunters. This thing will pick on poor little Yin Kudakus. It chases them off, steals their nests, eats their eggs, and leaves its own eggs behind. Which the Yin Kudaku will return to raise as its own because it's too stupid to know the difference. Honestly, the only reason it isn't at number one is because a sick part of me enjoys killing them. I hate them that much. To begin this entry, I would like to play a sound file. Now, to those of you who haven't played these games, this will not mean a thing. But to those who have, I apologize for the war flashbacks that I'm about to give you. You ready? Mm-hmm. That's the one. You hear that? That is the sound of pain. That is the sound of despair. That is the sound of a Gravios's stupid lava laser. I've been killed by this attack more than any other in the entire series. Several of those times, I was at full health during a very long fight without ever getting hit beforehand. Without a very special skill, this laser is unblockable so I need to dodge it, which in certain circumstances is impossible. Especially when fighting the Black Gravios, which does sweeping laser shots that cover the entire area. I have to hunt this monster on my own. With its massive health bar, it takes an hour to kill, but that is better than having my entire team die from one attack. And as for hunting an Apex Gravios, Forget about it. I have arachnophobia. Doesn't matter if a spider is small, harmless, or even if it is real. I'll run away screaming like a banshee. So when I was forced to fight the new spider monster in 4 Ultimate, I actually liked it. The Nursilla is a cool monster. The fight is fun, it drops awesome materials, and best of all, it eats Gypsaros. I can't imagine why. They look absolutely disgusting. The hide is rubbery, the poison definitely doesn't taste good, and I'm pretty sure that tail would give anything cancer. I'm pretty sure it's giving me cancer just looking at it. Seriously, what is up with that tail? It's like a cross between a rat tail and one of those sticky hands that is so gross. Thankfully, I won't have to look at it for too long, because the Gypsaros can flash its hideous crest to blind me. Because poison spit just wasn't enough. But surely poison and blinding is good for this monster, right? Nope, there's more. It plays dead like an idiot, it resists shock traps, and somehow, with that hideously deformed, unwieldy beak, it can steal items. I don't want to play this game anymore. Did you just see that? I just used a dinky little fishing rod to pull a 50-ton leviathan out of the water, over my head, to flop helplessly on the ground before me. Best feeling ever. 
So, what did I catch this time? Let me throw it back, please! This creature, the Plesioth, was the first aquatic monster hunter monster. Since it was introduced way before swimming was, battles with it would revolve around getting it to come out of the water. Cool concept, right? There's just one problem. This monster doesn't want to stay out of the water. I can only land a few free hits before it waltzes straight back into the ocean. If, of course, it doesn't kill me with its broken hitboxes. And then it happily swims around, wasting time, laughing at my frustration, occasionally surfacing to blast me with another stupid laser. And this one is water. I'm literally getting hosed to death. But at least it got demoted in 4 Ultimate. What was once a powerful creature can now be killed by five felines with a net. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. I love Monster Hunter music. Every time a battle theme plays, I feel a surge of emotion. I feel powerful, heroic, confident. I am about to fight a giant monster, and I am the one who is going to win. The adrenaline boost is intoxicating. Even if I am fighting a Yingaruga or a Gravios, I never lose that amazing feeling. It's one of my favorite aspects of this series. So what happens if you take that music away? Well, apart from ruining the experience, you get the Kezu. I understand what they were going for here. Capcom wanted to make the Kezu creepy, so they removed the music to make the fight more atmospheric, more eerie. Which would work if this was a horror game. It's not! I am not the Kelby from that admittedly terrifying cutscene. I am a hunter. I came here specifically to kill this disgusting, miserable looking creature. And without the heart pounding music empowering the fight, the Kezu only comes across as pathetic. Wanna see what I mean? Compare the Kezu to the Giganox. Where the Kezu feels pathetic, the Giganox feels terrifying. Anything would with this theme playing. It's over. I am not the hunter anymore. I am the prey. I forfeit myself to this orchestrated overlord. The Kezu has silence. Silence that gives a pathetic, lifeless feel to an already pathetic, lifeless monster. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you... No, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. Where's that stupid Gypsaros? Ah, that's better. Hey guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know how it works. It helps my channel grow, which helps me make more videos like this one. So go do that. Unless, of course, you didn't like this video. You hate Monster Hunter, or love one of the monsters I hate. Which is perfectly fine. I'm okay with differing opinions. Unless you're a Kezu lover, in which case, go away and never come back. Be sure to dislike, leave a hateful comment, and subscribe to hate my future content as well. Once you've done that, how about checking out some of my other stuff? I've got a link to another countdown somewhere over here, and a link to my Twitch channel, where I'm currently playing Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, somewhere over here-ish. Also, follow me on Twitter, where I post updates for my videos, and I'm probably currently fanboying about Monster Hunter Generations. Link to that will also be on the screen somewhere. And if you haven't already, go play some Monster Hunter. It is a great series. That's all I've got to say for this video, so if you'll excuse me, I've got some monsters to hunt. So I hope you are all enjoying life, and I will see you... probably not for a while. 
拜。